Welcome to this week's tech show. We've got some new bikes from Merida to talk about, plus two new bikes from Santa Cruz. Yes, plus new products from Fox uh, with regards to their transfer dropper post and beer colored bike bits from Cane Creek Neil. Plus some regulars from you guys and some great comments this week. Yep, don't adjust your TV sets or computers. Uh, Doddy's got the week off. I can't believe he's actually hey. allowed the time off. But Rich Smear New holding up the tech show this week. <laughs> yes, he's entrusted the fort to us, hasn't he? <laughs> um, our tech knowledge is going to be scrutinised, I'm sure, by the viewers. Uh, so leave your comments, or don't leave comments. Yeah, no, you feel go about easy it. on us. <laughs> uh, but this week, uh, the topic is about mountain bike standards. And w what a week to be in the tech set, Rich. Talk about standards. Probably my most fun thing to talk about. But <laughs> there's so many standards, isn't there? I know you love a good standard. Um, well, I think I'm like many mountain bikers who dread hearing of new standards. Oh. So this week we're actually celebrating standards that haven't changed. Believe it or not, there's some that haven't changed. There are many. Let's start off with a bit tenuous, this one maybe, but bottle cages, you know, the mounts. Yes, true. They've always been the same. Yes, so the eye to eye essentially, isn't it? Exactly, it's the eye thing actually you know, I'm joking about this, but actually what I'm really liking to see nowadays, my new uh, new Proof Mega has actually got these, but just for mountain accessories and so not necessarily bottle cages, but actually there's one underneath the top tube oh, okay. where you can mount things like yeah. Topeka have got them, like a, like a little tool kit that mounts I've to seen that. it, yeah, even like your pump, uh, all those extra little bits and bobs, it just allows you to attach them to the bike anywhere on it, wherever they put these standard mount bottles. So there's one. Uh, number two, the rear mech mount. Now people have tried to mess with this. Mm. Um, actually, Shimano tried to go, di well, still trying to go with those direct mounts. Yes. Fortunately, you can have the two options, so you can still get rid of the direct mount. But basically that sort of, that uh, hole in the pitch has never changed. So an old rear mech should, well, will, still fit a new frame. No, and it would be carnage as well, wouldn't it? Because there's so, already so many different types of mech hanger out there. Yep. that actually if you started doing something like that, it would, could be just a whole world of trouble. Wouldn't it be great if you could absolutely standardise the mech hanger so you'd only need one and you take that with you mm -hmm. for any bike? Now that would be... Dreamy. Uh, handlebars where you mount your brakes and your grips. Yes. So that diameter has never changed. It's 22.2 millimetres. I know. Be? And do you know what else has never changed? No. Chain pitch. Regardless of speeds, yeah. Uh, the chain pitch, so point to point, uh, centre of pin, centre of pin has always remained the same. However, the width has always changed depending upon the speed of the chain. Yeah, I guess, well, I don't know what the chain pitch is. It, here it says half inch or 12.7 millimetres. I, I don't know why you would know that, but there you go. Technical stuff, Rich. Do you think we're passing flying colours so far? I think we're getting through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, right. Oh, pedals. Pedals, we forgot pedals. Oh, much. gosh. Believe it or not, they're 9 sixteenths of an inch. Well, I don't know why we're on inches for pedals. Why are we still working in that? However, you could get half inch pedals for BMXs. I don't know if that's still the same, but back in the day, depending yeah. if you had one piece or three piece cranks on your uh, BMX, you'd run half inch for the three piece, for the one piece, the cheap ones. Okay. Not 9 sixteenths, have I got that right way around? Mm, I was never big on the BMX world, so I don't know on that one, but they're all the same now, when so bought, that's what counts. Well, when you bought yourself a fancy set of profile cranks, or oh. well, you got them given you for your birthday, it cost loads of money back in the day. I know. They were virtually unbreakable, then you could, uh, then you'd need to know which size pedals go That is true, that is true. Anyway, moving on. Right, Rich, into the news. We've got mm. two new XC offerings from Merida Bikes. Tell me about these. Uh, well, so yeah, like you said, there's two new bikes, the 96 and the 96 RC, with the RC being the XC Thoroughbred. So we're talking 100 mil travel front and rear flat bike. Bingo. Got and then we've one. got the, the 96 down country version, so yes. 120 mil up front, still like 100 mil on the rear. Yeah. I was just saying, 150 grams heavier for the C4, CF4 frame set. Slacker as well, 67 head angle. Yeah. And they're actually slightly different frame makeups. So they're, they're the same frame design, yep. but the carbon used in each one is slightly different. No alloy models, interestingly, mm. but we're seeing uh, quite a few manufacturers going for this. I know we've seen it with uh, Scott in the past, the Spark and the Spark RC. Yep. So having sort of a thoroughbred race machine and then possibly a more usable bike for them, slightly bigger order, more masses, should I say? Well, it depends what you're looking for out of a bike, but for yeah. a harder hitting cross country bike, there'll be people that probably want a bigger fork on the front end. Yeah, a little bit more trail center orientated, a little bit more all day, a bit, you know, built for a bit more comfort, I would say. Certainly 
on bikes that I've previously used where I've used the the down country version if yeah. you like then they are a bit more comfortable for those big old days yeah I did it with my Canyon Lux where I just I, you know it's the, it's the Lux but I just added a bigger fork or yeah. put a bigger um, 20 mil more travel than my standard fork on there and it did work a treat for it me. does doesn't it the same with that Oise TR I used on the coast to coast was the slightly so, burly one you've got all the sizes uh, the 96 which is the long travel bike comes for a, with reach of 420 up to 480 for a small to XL yep. So not huge, but on the large side. And then yeah. on the XC bike, uh, it goes from 433 up to 493. Small yes. through to XL again on those bikes. All one by as well. And interestingly, all linkage driven single pivot design. So they have a uh, flexible stays in the rear as opposed to a pivot. Yep. So making them that single pivot. I rode the Kandal Scalpel that had that design as well mm. earlier on in the oh, year. Yes. Two new bikes actually from Santa Cruz, well, although we're talking e-bikes this time. Uh, we've got the Heckler and the Bullet. This may be a name familiar to people who have been around for a while. The Bullet yes. was their kind of free ridey, um, almost short travel downhill bike yeah. back yeah, in the day. So. Um, but yeah, this is quite interesting. Obviously, Santa Cruz have a super strong syndicate downhill race team. So I think this is sort of one corner of the e-bike market. But Santa Cruz are probably going to corner, I would say. You know, this bullet is 170 mil travel, so a big hit in e-bike. It's a monster, isn't it? There's a great video of Loris Vergier riding this bike yeah. to launch it. So I know we're not the um, EMBN show, but um, interesting to see Santa Cruz's take on two new e-bikes. Mm, yeah, definitely. They are sort of venturing in there, aren't they? Also calling it the MX. They did this with, with the V10 as well. So MX going for the mixed wheel sizes, yeah. so 29 in front, 27 the on the rear. Uh, yeah, that's what they're calling that mixable size MX because motocross bikes do have that. It's got uh, both bikes have the new Shimano EP8, but it has 630 watt hour battery and obviously it is built for going downhill fast. They've also updated their Heckler, which is, has been around for a year or two now. Yep. Uh, got the new Shimano EP8 motor as well. Uh, travel has come down a little bit and they're offering the MX version as well, so mixed wheel size, but now it's 140 mil front and rear, down from 160 front, 150 rear, just to give you, I guess, a bit of differenti differentiation between the bullet and the heckler. Yes. Yeah, I suppose that bullet is a monster. Now, Neil, I know you love a, a cheeky beer, an IPA now and again. I love a craft beer, so yeah, <laughs> this is uh, singing, uh, music to my ears, should I say. It is, it is. This is right up your alley. Well, it's Cane Creek. They're releasing a new colourway. Uh, on some of their most popular bits and bobs uh, and it is sort of this ambery well, IPA colour. It's great. Uh, yes, they're saying that uh, over in Western North Carolina is known for many things, uh, rugged d uh, trails, miles of beautiful and serene country roads, but also really good beer. So why not celebrate that with this pretty awesome colour to be fair, sort of like goldy grey, mm, I like it, especially, you know. Looks, like I say, looks tasty. Exactly, beer inspired stuff, we need more of this, surely. That's Bikes it. Bikes and beer go hand in hand, like, <laughs> at least that's how I feel. So you can get in this uh, new IPA colour, you can get their Helm Mark II fork, you can get the Hellbender headset, uh, Hellbender bottom bracket, uh, and I believe, is it their E-Wing cranks as well? Let me just double check. I, I believe it's the BB, but I'm not ah, seeing the cranks, yeah. but those E-Wing cranks look pretty special. Oh uh, no, do you know what I was thinking of? It's because they do lots of crazy, they've done a lot of crazy colours in the past, and they did a crazy tie-dye, or tie right. of their E-Wings. Super high-end cranks so though, super expensive, mm. but apparently that set of cranks will last you a lifetime, so. <laughs> Good stuff coming yeah. out of Western North Carolina. Right, next up, and finally on the news today, Neil is Fox uh, released a new uh, sort of range of their transfer dropper post. Yep. With different drops, so now going up to a massive 200 mil. That is a big one. They have brought the stack height down, got a new clamp design on there, so giving you a bit more space to play with. But yeah, 200 mil. I've yeah. just had to go down. I've got a 170 on one of my bikes, and it was too big for me, to be fair. Really? So, I mean, great for bikes with low standover and tall riders, but yeah. you know, you've got 100, 125, 150, 175, and 200. Uh, I've got a factory version with Kashima Kofian mm -hmm. and then more affordable performance elite with black stanchions. Yeah, really covering all the bases there, isn't it? Good stuff. Yeah, nice one. Ah! That was a shout out. <laughs> right, an Insta shout out for Bespoke. This is a British handmade bicycle show that obviously this year has been cancelled. Doddy did go last year. Check out some awesome bikes. Uh, have a look on there, there's all sorts of different bikes from bamboo tandem fat bikes. I saw you show quite a bit of interest in that. Not my cup of tea, but <laughs> great to see people building whatever they want to build. However, this is my cup of tea. Check this one out. It's from Quirk Cycles. Oh. Uh, it's called The Journey. It's an overlander. It's a rigid 29er. 
this bike's been to Morocco to race the inaugural Atlas Mountains race. It's, look at it. it. I love the look of that. It's amazing. That is a bike packer's dream right there, isn't it? Isn't it, just Because mm. it's got like a front rack mounted to the head tube as well. It's pretty fancy pack. as well. There's Envy's on there and all sorts. And three bottle mounts? Yeah, sort cages. of um, that cage on the bottom. just Links us nicely to our news article, doesn't it? Grabs onto everything. Yeah, I love it. Cool stuff. Yeah. Check them out on Instagram. Rich, last week in the show, uh, mm. Doddy asked the question, talk about Athens bikes and their crowdfunding to raise some money. Uh, the question was, would you invest in Athens bikes? And actually, if you look through the comments, there's quite a few people that have invested from yep. the GMB and Tech viewers. What are the comments there, there Rich? There's quite a mixed response, isn't there? So, uh, Bugboy15200. Uh, Lest we forget, the most important thing about crowdfunding is that the Athertons get to run their company the way they want. No one investor to interject on the game plan. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Matt Rant says, I'm not surprised they're having to crowdfund. No investor worth their salt would want to invest in a micro brand that is stuck together with glue. However, good luck to them, but I'm out. <laughs> Ouch. Um, there's definitely a, a mix of the comments in yeah. there. Uh, well, plenty of uh, positive ones. Yeah, follow this next one. Uh, Billy Dainton, already have. Seems like a no-brainer, but as with everything, you only put in what you can afford to lose. So yeah. A clever investor there. Uh, Lane Copeland says, as far as supporting a stand-up brand than anything, I'm in as long as they're doing it right. I've just bought a Revel Rascal and can't be more happy. I've had two specialised bikes and felt the attention to detail and customer service was way more organic with Revel than specialised. I mean, it's probably going to be. You're talking about, you know, either end of the scales there, but... I yeah, mean, true. Experience, you know, counts for a lot when you're buying bikes, spending your own cash on bikes, mm. so definitely. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, it says Athen bikes, he or she, so I should say, Athen bikes will probably be the same way as long as they stay grounded to their past. Good luck to the Athens. Yeah, fair play. And finally, Tommy Estrada. I tried, but it's not available here in America. Yeah, I saw a few of those comments as well. Didn't, I don't know the ins and outs of that, but there must no. be quite a complicated back. Geo story, restriction type things? I don't know. Who knows? Um, on the hand guards as well that Dolly said he hated, I actually lo I do like them. Especially in winter, I feel like isn't, there's less air ru like rushing his yeah, hands. It depends how I mean. fast you're going, but I, I, occasionally, Andy Specifico, I ran them because he was smashing through yes. uh, those cactus. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Although I don't run them day to day on no. my old bike. Anyway, Noah Mulvey says, I have handguards I can turn on and off. They're called gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Anyway. Rich, do you want me to test your knowledge along with everyone else watching the show? Go on then, Neil. Right, the quiz. Which bike brand has also designed and built a quad bike? An ATV, I guess you call them. Yamaha. Probably, but uh, would you call them a bike brand? They make an e-bike. They do. I'm not sure. That's not the one I'm looking for, though. Yeah. Question number two. The DW suspension link design is used by many bike brands, including Pivot and Ibis. But what does DW stand for? I think that's an easy one. All right, don't brag. Uh, what does it stand for now? I'm not going to tell you. Yes, see. I'll have to research that one. This is also, on a related note, there's something that relates to these two questions. Okay. Uh, E13 used to be an in-house component brand, but for which company? Not a clue, actually. All right, questions coming up in just a minute. Ooh. Not questions. Answers coming up <laughs> in just a minute. <laughs> Rich, time to check out people's bike caves. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm especially excited because I'm actually building my own. Well, not just yet, but in the next few months, I will be building my own. And I've already been Googling all sorts of uh, workbenches and things Have to you? put in there. I'm not sure where to build it or to buy it. Mm, see, I'm intrigued because my garage currently looks like a cave because it has a cobbled floor and everything. So yeah. I can give uh, some inspiration. Uh, well, exactly. That's what I'm here for. And this one comes from Carl, who rides a Dartmoor Blackbird. This is in Merseyside. Watching the show, I always uh, watching everyone else's bike cave. I thought I should show mine. I work on my two bikes, a Dartmoor Hornet and my new build, Dartmoor Blackbird. Big fan. Very nice. Um, check it out. There's some muck off brand on there. Got some nice, uh, nice set of Allen keys. Yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? I like that. And those little sort of tool, I uh, like. Odds and sods bins, you know those little uh, things your around all. Random them? assortment of yeah. I mean, stuff. every good garage needs a sort of those, but mm. I'm 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 not sure I want to go down that route. I want to put my odds and sods away. I think you're quite an organised guy. I feel I'm not. Oh. That's, that's my problem. I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. You might have seen my garage tour from like a few years ago. My old garage was a right. Yeah, tip. that's true. 
Um, he's also got some spare tyres hanging up on the wall, so good to have all the spares. He's got yep. a little bucket of zip ties in the corner. Everyone's got a bucket of zip ties. Doddy would be pleased. Uh, I like it. Uh, nice. He's got a set of man suits on, hanging on the wall. A Look at that, it's got the tool chest on wheels and a nice oh, fancy, little yeah. strip on the floor to stop it rolling away. Oh, wow. Very nice. Oh, there's, there's one of the, that's the brand new ones. That, that's the Dartmoor Blackbird. Check it out. You really don't see many of those bikes knocking around. No, Dartmoors are pretty rare, aren't they? What have we got next then, Neil? Uh, over to Adam in Fairbanks, Alaska. He's even got a bear on his bed. Check no, it out. No, well, he does as well, yeah. Uh, well, two bears, another bear dangling. Uh, check that out, the selection of bikes. What's that titanium thing hanging on the wall? I'll get there in a sec, but it's, uh, let's look at Two bike, three bike packing bikes, a fat bike. Uh, I mean, if you live in Alaska, you gotta have a fat bike, innit? Uh, Adam says, I spend a lot of time and money making my bikes look and perform exactly how I want. Each of these bikes are custom builds and I love to see them. So what better way to appreciate them than have them? Uh, that's the first thing I see in the morning. <laughs> He's fanatical. Check them out. The dogs seem to be loving it as well. Oh. What makes more mess in the bedroom, dogs or bikes? That's what I want to know. <laughs> uh, nine, so a couple of bikes from 907, got that sort of gravelly bike packing bike yeah, with yeah. the GRX stuff on there. And then there's that fat bike on the wall, that green fat bike, 907, not a brand I'm familiar with. Rich, you heard of them? No, but it does look lovely. I'm sure it's very good for getting out there in the Alaskan snow. Um, that uh, sadly, I mean, I love to see it, but sadly, that one didn't inspire me. I'm not going to get away with bikes or dogs in the bedroom, probably. So, uh, mm, no. yeah, thanks to Carl and Adam for sending in their bike caves this week. Keep sending them using the uploader, love checking them out. And I'm going to go through the full archive of tech shows to uh, you know, brush up my knowledge on other people's bike caves. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to do the same actually. Some good, <laughs> good ones in there, right? On to top mods. Oh, let's see what you got. First in to top mods is Neil with his airdrop bitmap. Uh, he's been building this in his living room in Manchester. Uh, first thing he changed was the chain ring, some purple bits in there, purple, bird tech pedals, nice. Finished the build and went riding. It's a real blast to ride and recently put a new purple valves on Oof. the Schwalbe's. Check it out. Look at that um, sort of strap on the down tube as well. Must yeah, yeah, I did gear strap. I guess for, yeah, just stick them whenever you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what do you call it? Uh, inner tube. What are those things you used to use called? Inner tube. Inner tube. Uh, also got a purple bell on there. Check it out. Pretty purple cool. Bell. Nice. Excellent. Uh, next up, we have got Dale with his 2018 Norco Ninja Balance Bike. That's cool. That's it is. All the way from Yukon, Canada. So he's put some, like, he had some clear protective stuff le left over. So he he has, yeah. What's he said? So uh, after redoing the frame protection on my bike, I had some leftover sheets. Decided to put them on my daughter's balance bike. So hopefully keep the frame looking nice for years to come. It's a good point because my mm. boy's got a little specialised hot rock in the gears. Oh, yeah. Absolutely shredded. Battered. The bottom of it, there's hardly any paint left on it. <laughs> but. It is a kid's bike. Yeah. <laughs> nice so one, Dale. What have we got next then, Neil? We've got a very cool looking YT Jeffsy uh, from Angus up in Edinburgh. Uh, it's the first new bike I've bought in a decade, so I decided I want to go big and kit out the parts we really wanted. Ooh. It looks like a dream. Oh, cool. That's really good. Uh, red Rock Shots Lyric up front, Coil Shock on the back. Mm -hmm. um, TF tuned, uh, Super Deluxe nice. on the back. Renthal Cockpit, very nice. Ergon GA, GA1 grips, Ho uh, Hope, Tech, Hope Tech 3 V4 brakes, so 220 disc up front. Oh, all the power. 200 on the rear, I'm a big lad, need the extra grunt. Uh, <laughs> full play. XTR other than the XT set, micro spline conversion for the E13 wheels, RockShox Axis post on there. Whoosh! That's some top mods. Uh, new proof oh, Sandhill tie pedals. Oh my lord. Someone's uh, doing and well it's also for themselves. Put a works component one and a half degree headset on there. Very nice. Wow. He has, yeah, he's modded that thing. Yeah, that's that cool. That looks good. Yeah. Uh, finally, we have Edwin with his Santa Cruz balance bike, Neil. Did you know they make a balance bike? Did not. No, I don't think they do. I think <laughs> he is a, a sticker this one up. But from Barla, North Wales, and my two year old son wanted a Santa Cruz like me, nice. uh, as he's got one. So bought a cheap Vitus for 50 quid and got some. St <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> and got some. Uh, Decal for a fiver on eBay. Legit. Why not? Yeah. Come Kids on. are loving it, getting them into riding, so good mm -hmm. on you. 
Right, Rich, I have the quiz answers now. Oh, gosh. Okay. I feel like it's very easy. The first answer, who, feel, who built bikes and ATVs and also motorcycles, actually? Yam. Cannondale. Ah. Although, strictly speaking, you, you could be right. Yamaha do e-bikes and they do motorbikes and they do pianos. I was thinking outside the box. Uh, Cannondale, they built that motocross bike that almost uh, bankrupted the whole did, business because it was so bad. It did not do well. Um, DW Link. Go on, em. Dave Weagle, of course. Dave Weagle, of course. Um, who's designed some incredible bikes and he's also linked to Evil and E13 because Evil launched E13 oh. components and Dave Weagle was one of the founders of both those companies back in the day. So there you go, Dave Weagle all over the cruise. Fountain of knowledge. <laughs> Well, but that's it for today, Neil. It is. That's this week's tech show over. Doddy will be back next week, so don't worry. Whew. Normal service resumed. Uh, <laughs> let us know how bad or how good you think us. No, don't actually. Don't, don't let us know. Probably best not. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, catch you soon. Cheers. <laughs>